Okay, if I'm being honest with you guys, I do not feel like filming today. Like zero, none, nada, no part of me feels like being in front of a camera and being perceived. It's like five degrees outside. I have three hairs on my chin that I can't pluck because I can't find my freaking tweezers anywhere. And I have an ultrasound later, even though I'm not pregnant. So, but for the first time in literally like actually three months, I decided to wake up this morning and put on actual real people clothes and we can't let that go to waste. So, here we are. Happy holidays. <laughs> Are you drinking water? Go get water. Yeah. It's good for you. <laughs> okay, hi, if you're new here, my name is Maddie. I make content online about mental health, specifically burnout and my experiences with burnout and books. Okay, so this video originally started out and it was supposed to be like a reading vlog mixed in with like some holiday fun festivities kind of thing. But I didn't film myself reading a single thing. I only filmed myself doing holiday stuff. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Um, I just must not have been thinking, honestly. So that's where I come in. Me, this me, future me, who has read all of the books and is just going to review them. And then you guys can see like a tiny mini vlog. Actually, it'll probably be the other way around. You guys will see a tiny mini vlog. And then I will be back at the end for a couple of holiday recommendations, holiday reviews, a little bit of a holiday TBR, like a nice bookish chat. Isn't this not some fun? Get like a cute little like warm holiday drink and cozy up, watch me do some fun holiday things, and then we're gonna come back and talk about books. Isn't that gonna be so fun? I'm super excited. I hope you guys have a good time and I will see you in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, however long the vlog is to talk about the books. Okay, enjoy. Hi, welcome to my side room. Okay, so I've got all my little things for us to paint my nails. I'm really excited. I'll throw up like a inspiration picture over here, but I'm doing most of my nails in this dark green color. And then I'm gonna do one of them in this like sparkly white kind of color and that's the one that's gonna have the Christmas tree on it. I'm also watching the 2005 Pride and Prejudice. It's my favorite. <laughs> Hi, voiceover Maddie here popping in just to explain what's going on in these clips. Uh, so basically I decided to crochet my mom and my grandma uh, matching sweaters for their dogs. <laughs> I completely forgot to film any of the other process except for this, but I basically just found a really easy template online and it includes one chest piece that's all white that goes over their chest and then one back piece that has a bunch of stripes that um goes over their back obviously you sew those two bad boys together leave a little bit of room for their arms and a little bit of room for their head and voila you got yourself a dog sweater i did not think that my parents and my grandparents were going to care that much about this i thought this was just going to be like a silly thing that i did that made me laugh um but they actually really love them it just ended up being like a really cute, really funny moment uh, in the night, especially because my mom's dog is like this really grumpy, mean, old little dog. 
And the entire time we were trying to put the sweater on him, he was just biting and growling and barking and trying to jump out of our hands. We weren't hurting him. He's just a grumpy guy. And then Mia, my uh, grandmother's dog, she's like the sweet, docile little thing who just laid there while we put it on her. And she just loved it. I did not take any footage of the dogs in the sweaters. I didn't take any photos of the dogs in the sweaters. Didn't take any footage of anybody opening any presents. I completely forgot. I did nothing at all. All I have are these two really grainy cropped photos of other stuff going on in the night with the dogs in the sweaters. So enjoy those. me again i know two voiceovers in one video what is this <laughs> i 
but I thought I would take this montage time to talk a little bit about why being in the Christmas spirit this year felt so important to me. It really narrows down to this. As a neurodivergent person, I oftentimes find myself just floating in time and space without ever really knowing when or where I am. <laughs> I feel like oftentimes life just goes and goes and goes and goes and sometimes I'm there and sometimes I completely miss it. And as a child, I would basically keep track of when in the year we were by the decorations in my house. <laughs> my mom does a lot of interior design, so my house was always decked out for all the seasons, all the holidays, and oftentimes just because my mom liked to decorate. Last year, I didn't really decorate for Christmas in my own home, and I felt like Christmas just completely passed me by. I didn't take any time to really enjoy the season at all. Everything felt like I was rushing and rushing and rushing through all of the things that I needed to do for Christmas that I actually forgot to enjoy Christmas itself. To really savor and enjoy the traditions from things like baking to picking out or making gifts that my loved ones will really enjoy and cherish to small things like decorating a Christmas tree. I was absolutely determined to enjoy Christmas this year because it has become so abundantly obvious to me lately that no one is going to make your life happy for you. My mom took so much time and effort to make me happy as a kid, but I'm on my own now. It's up to me to make my own life happy. And doing things like really taking the time to enjoy not only Christmas Day, but all of the happy, joyful things around it is one small way I'm putting in time and effort to make my life happier for me. When I started editing this video, I was pretty upset that I didn't have that much footage of all the Christmas things that I did. I have done so much more than what you see in this video. I baked with both of my grandmas, I made almost all of the gifts I've given so far this year, and I spent so much time just in my childhood home around my family. But I realized you don't see any of this footage because I was really present in those moments. I was just enjoying my loved ones, enjoying sharing my family with my husband, and enjoying feeling loved and happy. Through this incredibly strange and somewhat stagnant part of my life, it is very, very easy for me to focus on all the ways I feel like a failure right now. But having something to focus on, like organizing the decorations, or making Christmas gifts, or baking cookies and cakes and breads, and then seeing my loved ones enjoy and revel in those things made me feel purposeful again. So yeah, I may be unemployed, but my grandpa loved the fudge I made specifically for him, and sometimes that is perfectly enough. The thing I'm realizing from this time is that I have to learn to place more value on the little things. I have to learn to appreciate them, and to learn how to feel like I'm enough because of them. Sometimes life really is good just because we put a sparkly star on top of a tree decorated with things we made before we even really comprehended that we were alive, and I think that's kind of beautiful. Hello, hi, how was the vlog? Did you guys like it? Was it fun? I thought this one was kind of fun, but then towards the end there we get into some like little deeper topics about mental health and how we're feeling but it's like a cute little light fun vlog maybe i hope so <laughs> did you guys have a good time i hope you had a good time <laughs> um if you're wondering what this is this is a snail that my husband got for me for christmas and it's not technically christmas yet but i need her by my side Plus, she matches my outfit. You guys can't really see, but I got this green motif going on right now. And she fits right in. <laughs> Today's video is chaotic. Okay, so this is the fun part. This is the book part. So I'm going to be sharing the three books that I read throughout this time that you guys didn't see any footage of, but I promise it happened. Um, and then I'm going to talk about a couple of like books that are on my radar, like on my little holiday TBR kind of thing um real real quick let's start with the first one that i don't have a physical copy of and that is in a holidays by christina lauren i think this is like a groundhog effect christmas trip vacation romance thing about a girl who is going on vacation with her family 
and all of her like family friends and a set of brothers that is within those family friends. But basically the book opens up on December 26th after the like week long vacation is over. She has just made a dire mistake with one of the two brothers that she thinks is going to ruin their friendship, all three of them together. Um, and she's just learned that the cabin that they've been vacationing at for like years and years and years, um, they're selling it. And so they're not going to be able to come back next year and celebrate their, uh, holidays together anymore. And so she's pretty sad. She's pretty upset. Um, she's actually devastated. Obviously everything that she loves is sort of falling apart and she gets in the car, she drives home, she gets into a car accident, wakes up on December like 18th or 20th before the trip has even began. And so it's like a classic time loop kind of thing where she gets in these accidents, gets sent back in time. She has to figure out what's going on and how she can fix the time loop. And that involves like saving the cabin and like the two brothers and her relationship with them. Um, It's a romance. And so obviously along the way, she falls in love. I won't lie to you. I was not the biggest fan of this book. I think it was fine for what it was. I don't think you can really like judge holiday books for like how well they were written or like how unique and different the plot is like we're all here for the vibes and like that's fine that's what I signed up for but even those were a little bit lacking there wasn't like a ton of like specific Christmas stuff happening it was more just like winter kind of vibes they like made cookies and went sledding and like built snow statues (laughs) so it wasn't like specifically Christmas and I think that kind of bummed me out and watching the relationship that forms in this book is like watching two little kids play with plastic dolls like playing house (laughs) it's like very it feels weird and like pretty superficial and the main girl has a personality and she's well fleshed out but the main guy is not he's kind of like a wet blanket throughout the whole thing and it's like just it it wasn't the best it wasn't that good I'm not upset that I read it I listened to it on audio and it was nice to have on the background while I was doing like other Christmas stuff and other Christmas errands but it really did just end up being like yeah you know the next one is very very similar so this one I also listened to on audio and this is called Claws and Effect by someone rain someone pain Sorry to all the authors out there, but I'm having a rough day. (laughs) This one is like your classic need to get home for the holidays, need to get home for Christmas, but all the flights are canceled because there's a big snowstorm. So I have to rent a car with a stranger that I don't really know who like somehow I feel safe getting in the car with by myself. But he's also really handsome and turns out we hate each other, but maybe not. Like those are the vibes of this book. That's like the whole plot of this book. Um, So it's very, like, stereotypically Christmas. It feels like a holiday uh, Hallmark film. Those are the vibes I was looking for, so I was pretty happy that they were there. This one, I will say, felt the most like an actual Christmas novel. There was, like, actual Christmas themes involved. They, like, went to a giant gingerbread house, and they, like, end up getting stranded in this town that's literally called Christmas. Um, so it, it felt more Christmas-y. They went to, like, an eggnog festival, so it it felt very, like, this is Christmas, not just this is December, January, or February, you know? (laughs) Which was very important to me. I was looking specifically for those vibes, and I was let down in two other books. (laughs) But basically, our main guy is, I can't remember either of their names, I'm sorry. Our main guy is a Marine who is retiring from the army, and he's coming home, and he's worried that his family is going to, like, kind of judge him for his decisions and what's going on with his life so he's a bit stressed out about that but also he's in the army so he misses his family really desperately so he's trying to get home to spend time with them to see them to you know celebrate with them all that good stuff our main girl on the other hand has absolutely no family she has just uh buried her last living relative and she goes to see this psychic after the funeral and this psychic tells her that um like she has this great love out there that has a big family Um, that will welcome her in on Christmas. She just needs to go and find this person and follow them. So she thinks that the psychic is talking about her ex-boyfriend. And so she like flies out to where her ex-boyfriend is from because he, you know, went home for the holidays and she chases him across the country. These two meet up in the airport. They fight. They don't like each other, but somehow they end up in a rental car together. Um, And it, the road trip ensues. 
This book is easily my favorite among all the three that I read over the course of these two weeks, just because it had the best Christmas vibes, like I said. As far as like whether or not it was like a good quality book, again, I don't really think that's what I was looking for, so I don't really feel qualified to like judge that. I think it was good. I laughed. It was funny. The romance was cute, kind of. <laughs> they were a bit weird together. The third act conflict was like not that good. Is it third act or is it second act? Whatever. You know how every romance book has a breakup at the end, pretty much? That breakup didn't feel super justified to me. It felt like the main guy just had a bunch of stuff that he hadn't unpacked and that he wasn't actually that emotionally mature. And so it kind of ruined my perspective of him for me. But I had a good time. I laughed. It was funny. The main girl's kind of cute. So it was nice. It was good to have on in the background. I would recommend this one. This one I would recommend. <laughs> okay, the last one is Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey, and I saved this one for last for a very specific reason, but let me give you a little bit of a synopsis first before I jump into why I feel the way that I do about this one. <laughs> so our main two characters are the two kids of a very famous rock duo. Um, the band broke up before both of them were born, and so they've never met each other. Well, they met each other once when they were 16, but they have always sort of felt like they had this bond between the two of them because they're the children of these very hyper-famous women who were, like, feminist icons back in the, I want to say, like, the either the 70s or the 90s, I can't remember. Um, and now, you know, they're the children of these people, so they're kind of thrust into the spotlight throughout their entire childhood even though they didn't ask for it and they both want to just live very regular lives so they feel very connected even though they've only met each other that one time when they were 16. The main guy is being blackmailed that is not a spoiler it's literally on like the second page um but he's being blackmailed and he's running out of money so when a reality tv producer reaches out to him to ask him to meet up with Melody? Melody. The main guy's name is Beat. beat yeah that was gross but anyway when beat gets a phone call from a reality tv show producer who wants him and melody to try and get their mothers to reunite for a like once in a lifetime concert on christmas eve he really considers it because it's a lot of money that she's offering and he doesn't have any money and he needs to pay back this blackmailer, right? <laughs> and Melody decides to do it because, get ready for this, she wants to get out of her comfort zone. I'm so tired of women doing things in romance novels because they want to get out of their comfort zone. Can we think of something else at this point, please? It's a very common trope and I don't like it. It makes women seem like their lives are completely laid out ahead of them and so because they've like followed this traditional path of like womanhood or whatever they are now stuck in this rut that like needs to be broken and like all this stuff it, it just doesn't allow for a lot of like variety in the way that we see women's 20s and 30s and i'm not the biggest fan so that was a little annoying basically they get together and they have to work together to get their moms to reunite together for this concert and because it's a romance novel, obviously hijinks ensue and they fall in love and da 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 XYZ, right? The reason why I saved this one for last, because this book was surprisingly very sex centric. I don't mean that as in like the plot has a lot of sex in it. Cause there's, a, there's a decent amount of smut in this book. I, I was a little surprised. In my holiday novel, I wasn't expecting it, but... <laughs> But it's Tessa Bailey, so I, I guess I should have known. What I mean is that, like, a main character trait of his is linked to a sexual component of his life. I can't say anything without really giving away spoilers, because it's actually, like, his his character development and, like, the plot development, low-key, of their relationship centers very heavily around this very specific sex thing specifically a kink that he has and it made me a little uncomfortable not the kink itself but the way that the kink was talked about the way that it was portrayed the way that he acted because of it felt a little extreme and forced 
And so it, it just made me a little uncomfortable. I wasn't a huge fan of it. And I thought that it was weird that she used a like kink and a sex thing as character development for him. And it felt like she was kind of just trying to make him seem like a little sexier. And people actually struggle with that stuff. And so I just, it was weird and kind of weird and and weird. (laughs) It's very hard for me to move past that or to put that aside to kind of enjoy the rest of the novel, which is kind of sad because the rest of the novel was pretty good. Their moms are super weird. Beat's mom is like this really glamorous, like high fashion star who's like all about luxury and she wants the center of attention to always be on her um and melody's mom is like this like quasi kind of maybe a cult leader question mark she like lives out in the middle of nowhere and doesn't use the internet has like completely removed herself from society (laughs) and like you get to spend like a little bit of time with both of the women and they are amazing characters both of them i love them Um, The book is very honest, very straightforward, very blunt, and everybody in this book has pretty decent communication skills. Pretty decent, not bad. Um, At least the way they communicate with each other is very entertaining. And so overall, I think this book wasn't bad. Um, I had a decent time. It was nice to kind of escape into the world for a little bit, but I just would be wary of that weird thing surrounding sex. (laughs) If you're going to read this book, that's just the tiny caveat that I would put in there. Okay, I rambled for way longer than I wanted to. I talked about way more than I wanted to. And I have a strong feeling that almost none of this is cohesive or makes sense. Because my brain is scrambled. Oh well. (laughs) A lot of chaotic energy today. Okay, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed my mini holiday vlog. I hope that you guys liked spending a little bit of time with me and my family during Christmas. And I hope that you got yourself a nice good book rec from the stuff that I talked about today. All right, if you guys could do me a solid and like, comment, subscribe, do that whole thing. You know how YouTube works. I would really, really appreciate that. I'm wishing you all the love, the light, and the happiness in the world. And I can't wait to see you in another one. Okay. Happy holidays, guys. Bye.